Hi guys, my name is Ashley and this is Kingdom Culture Channel, where we use the tools that Jesus gave us to live victoriously in this life. Well, this time we're going to talk about praying in the spirit. Now, I've done a video before on the different types of prayer, like supplication and things like that, intercession, but I wanted to take the time out to teach you guys or talk you guys through how to pray in the spirit or how to be led by the spirit. Now, I was taught a few years ago um, by um, Marcus Tankard and my pastor, Pastor Craig Butler II, um, that sometimes people confuse praying in the spirit with praying in your heavenly language. They think that praying in the spirit is just speaking in tongues. And that's not the case. Praying in the spirit is not only speaking in tongues, but it's really being led by the Holy Spirit while you're praying. Now, I thought this was really important because I understand that sometimes people don't really know what to pray and they don't know how to pray. Um, and sometimes it can get a little baffling. You may feel like, oh, I have so many things to pray for in the world. I feel like that all the time. There's always so much to pray for in the world. And you're like, well, goodness, where do I even start? Um, or how do I know what God wants me to pray for today? Um, for me, I got kind of thrown into the fire back in 2000, I want to say 17, maybe it was 15, 2015. And I was a part of a campus ministry um, when I was a student at Morehouse School of Medicine. And we used to meet every Wednesday morning. Um, I think it was like seven in the morning or six in the morning. One of those it was super early before classes. And we would pray together concerning, you know, our campus and the things we wanted to do and um, just our meetings that we would have with the other students on campus. And um, I remember one of the first times I came to the meeting um, to pray, Basically, the leader told me, you're going to be leading the meetings. You're going to be our prayer, you know, our intercessor going forward. And, uh, you know, he told me before the first meeting and I just kept thinking, oh, I'm so nervous. How do I know what to pray for? I'm so nervous. I, what if I run out of things to say and things like that? And I was like, God, I, I don't think I actually know how to handle or carry through a whole entire prayer meeting um, by myself. And so I kind of studied the Lord's Prayer because one of the things I always do is when I need answers to something, I'm like, okay, how did Jesus do it? <laughs> Let me look at Jesus. That's probably the best answer right there. Um, but even in that time of me studying, I realized that um, that nervousness, that anxiousness, all of that kind of subsides when you kind of say, okay, I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to lead me in this prayer. So when we started that prayer, I didn't know exactly what I was going to say. I didn't have any prayer points. I knew in general what we wanted to pray about, but I didn't have any specifics. I was just like, I'm just going to allow the Holy Spirit to pray through me. And so when we started the meeting, you know, we always start off our prayers by giving thanks to God, you know, focusing on gratefulness and thankfulness and just worshiping and praising him. And so after we did that, um, well, I started to pray in my heavenly language first and then as I would pray, there would be certain words or terms or people or faces that would come to my mind or just come alive in my spirit as I pray. And so let's just say, for instance, I'm praying in my heavenly language, you know, praying, you know, in my tongues or whatever. And then I may get the word love or I may get the word love one another or the term one love one another. And that'll come to my mind and it'll come out of my spirit. And then I'll say it, and then the Holy Spirit would then lead me into praying into that topic, right? So it's kind of like he gives you topics to pray for as time permits, right? And so you pray into that. So let's say I got love or love one another, right? And maybe a scripture about love will come to my mind, or maybe just talking about us loving each other on campus or loving each other in this community, is something I started to pray for. And then as I prayed more and more, as I started to say more and more, or as I started to um, just kind of pay attention to what the Holy Spirit is doing in that moment, then he would open up more things for me to say, right? So it's not that I knew exactly what I was gonna say before anything happened. It's me allowing the Holy Spirit to bring things to my mind. Now, I wanted to talk about a certain scripture 
because I think this is really, really important in understanding what I mean. And this scripture is John chapter 16. And we're going to start at verse 13. And as always, I'm reading from the NIV version. It says, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come. He will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. So in that passage, Jesus was talking and he was telling the disciples, he was telling them about the Holy Spirit. See, at this time, the disciples had not experienced the Holy Spirit because Jesus was still here on earth. Now, this is before Jesus was going to tell them, hey, you're going to go and you're going to pray and wait for the Holy Spirit to come. And then it's going to give you power and you're going to go and preach and teach, you know, to all of the parts of the world. Right. To Judea, Samaria, and then all of the other parts that he mentioned in Acts chapter one. Well, he was telling them what the Holy Spirit was going to do, because at this time they didn't really know. You got to remember that while Jesus was still walking on the earth, the only instance in which they really knew the Holy Spirit was in the Old Testament. And the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, well, he just came and rested on certain individuals. As my pastor taught, that he would rest on individuals like kings or people that um, like judges in the book of Judges that would come and just help God's people through a certain situation or matter. But these people didn't know the Holy Spirit living on the inside of them. The Holy Spirit had not come in that way yet. Jesus was trying to tell them what the Holy Spirit would help them do. And if you go back to John chapter 14 is when he talks um, about the Holy Spirit um, in one of his first instances. In John chapter 14, 16, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of Truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him for he lives with you and will be in you. So that is when um, God, Jesus first tells them about the Holy Spirit. And then you go back to, or go forward to John chapter 16. He says more specifically, the Holy Spirit will teach you, tell you about things to come. And he will teach you and guide you into all truth. So when you're praying, you have to understand that the Holy Spirit will teach you or tell you about things. You won't know every single thing. Why? Because the Holy Spirit is God's spirit. The Holy Spirit is telling you everything that's on the spirit or in the spirit of God. You have to understand that God is a spirit. We are spirits, but we have a soul, which is our mind, will, and emotions, and we live in the body. So the way that God communicates with us is through his spirit, speaking to our spirit. So you have this interchanging of information, if you will. Sometimes you might hear people say, God is downloading something into my spirit. What they really mean is God's spirit is speaking into my spirit things that I need to know. And sometimes it's not just things for you. Sometimes it's things for other people. Sometimes it's things for the future. Sometimes it's things for um, different projects and things that God wants you to do. It's a very special connection, a very, very special language, and it really gives you an idea or a sense of what basically is on the mind of God, what he wants to happen in this world. And you have to take it on as a privilege that God is revealing what is on his mind and what he wants to happen to you so that you can either do it or pray it and do it. So it's about yielding yourself to the spirit while you're praying so you might have to take some time and i would say if you're just starting out one good thing to do is to allow yourself to pray like you normally would and then stop at the end of your prayer or even in the middle and just wait just two to five minutes to stop listen quiet your mind and take some time to listen now, that'll help you listen to God better, more clearly, if you start to do that. Now, if you start to do that more regularly and you take two to five minutes each day and you do that, that'll help you sharpen your skills in listening. Now, when you're praying and you get into a better habit of it, sometimes you can pray and you can hear things as you're praying. Because you have to understand when you're praying to God in the spirit and you're using your heavenly language to accompany that, you're not really using your mind because you don't have to think hard about it. You don't have to think about doing it. Praying in your heavenly language 
is just something that flows naturally. You don't have to think about what letters or consonants to say next, what vowels to say or what pattern to say it in. You don't have to do that. It's really about um, allowing just the Holy Spirit to flow through you and you don't have to think too hard about it. So as you're doing that, sometimes you'll hear the Holy Spirit bring something up to you or sometimes you'll get a sense of the Holy Spirit trying to bring something up to you. Another thing that you can do while you're praying and you want to pray in the spirit, not just in tongues or your heavenly language, is pay attention to what's going on on the inside of you, on your be in your belly. So sometimes when I feel like I need to pray or I feel like God wants me to pray more about a certain thing, I feel a little um, scratch or something like that in my belly or I feel a little tingling sensation, pulsating sensation in my belly. And then I'll know I should probably keep going about this. Now, when God wants me to finish talking about or praying about something, I'll feel a peace. And what that feels like to me is things just kind of subsiding just resting. And then I'll know that, okay, I think I'm finished praying about that thing. So yield yourself to hearing from the Holy Spirit. Practice that. If you feel like you don't have it right away, please do not fret, do not worry. Ask God to help you be more consistent with it. Ask God to help your unbelief if you are feeling like, oh, I don't know if that could really happen for me. Pray and ask God, God, please help my unbelief. Please help my faith to grow in this area. And what you can also do, pray with other people who know how to do this. Because <laughs> once you do that, you'll get a sense of what it's supposed to be like. Not that you're supposed to copy after them. Never. You're not supposed to be the same as somebody else. However, you can get a sense of what it's supposed to be like. And you can go from there. So hopefully this helps you. If you have any questions, please ask, ask those questions because sometimes I may not explain things completely co uh, coherently or in a way that you can understand. It may make sense to me, but you might need follow-up questions and that's okay. I don't mind that. So please ask your questions if you have them. Practice, pray with other people, and ask your pastor. Your pastor would know what to do and how to do it. So I hope this helps. I love you guys. God loves you more. And please pray in the spirit. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye.